Morning Year 10, welcome back to today's living room lesson. Um, as always, exercise books, pen and a ruler, your phone, and we are good to go. Um, but before we do, as always, here's our little jogging memory. So three quick questions, please go and follow the QR code and fill this in on Google Forms for us. Okay, so we've done four lessons of our water topic so far. We've had a look at what water supply and demand is, the differences in water supply and demand, why Hicks and Licks have different amounts. We've had a look at um, water security, water scarcity, and then we've had a look at South Africa and how they've used both national scale and local scale projects to try and combat the water issues of water insecurity. So the last two lessons in this topic, we are having a look at an example of something called over abstraction. Now we'll talk you through what that means in a minute, but we're gonna be having a look at how over abstraction of water um, has an impact in a low income country. So title in your books today is over abstraction, over abstraction in an LIC. So please write that in your books, underline it with a ruler. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm going to talk you through, first of all, what this word over abstraction means. So to abstract something is to take something out. So to take away um, water. So over abstraction is when too much water is being taken. And when we reach this point that water is being taken faster than it can recharge or replenish the water supplies, this reaches a point where the water levels will decrease and this leads to over abstraction. So I'd like you first of all to write down what this key term means. So what does over abstraction mean? So it means when water is taken at a faster rate than it is recharged. And then I would like you to have a think about how this would be different in a hick and a lick. So I want you to have a go at this kind of snowball P sentence here. So the impact will be worse for hicks versus licks. So I want you to decide, do you think over abstraction is going to have a greater impact in a high income country or a low income country? This is because, and then give a social, economic or environmental impact, and then explain why this is long term. So copy out the key term and have a go at this snowball about whether over abstraction is gonna be worse in a high income country or a low income country. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be having a look at over abstraction in a low income country when water is being taken faster than it can recharge. And we are having a look at an example of a large lake in kind of Central Africa. Um, and this lake is called Lake Chad. So Lake Chad used to be a huge big lake that kind of, as we can see, spanned across a lot of different countries. Um, and what I would like you to do first of all is a little heading of Lake Chad, and then I just want you to describe the location of the lake. So when you are describing your location, you obviously need to be using compass points, so north, east, south, west. So where is it within Africa? So would we say it's in the south of Africa? Probably not. And then I want you to say what kind of countries it is near to. And when you say near to, again, you would say to the north, to the east, etc. So maybe three quick bullet points outlining um, the, the, the location of Lake Chad. Okay, so hopefully in your definitions, you have said that Lake Chad is kind of central Africa, but northeast directions. It's kind of over in the northeast direction, but it is fairly central. Um, we could say that it borders Chad, Niger, Nigeria and Cameroon. Um, you could say that it's in the south of Niger. You could say that it's in the west of Lake Chad. I just realised I said northeast, didn't I? Northwest of Africa, sorry. Um, yeah, so you could say it's in the west of Chad, the northeast of Nigeria. Um, yeah, so lots of points you could have made about its location and the countries it borders. Now, as I mentioned, Lake Chad has been rapidly, rapidly decreasing. So here are two images. This first one here is in 1972, and this one here is in 2007. And as we can see, the lake that used to span across these four nations is now tiny. So the dark blue is obviously where the water used to be, and this is where it now is. The amount of water in this lake has reduced hugely. So first thing I want you to do is just go and watch this video and have a look at what has been going on in Lake Chad. So what we can see here now 
um, is it's broken down more. So the first, you just have two images. Um, so this is from 1963 to 2001. So we can see what has gradually happened to the lake over this uh, 40, just under 40 year period. And we can see that the water has now reduced so hugely that majority of the land is now vegetation. Um, a huge amount of water has been lost. If I was to look at this, I'd probably say maybe 15% of the water is now left in Lake Chad. So a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of water is now remaining in Lake Chad. So what I want you to do is, this was an exam question a few years ago. Sat study the two satellite images in figure 3.3 and 3.4. They show a lake in blue, which is shrinking due to evaporation and increasing demand for water. First thing I want you to do is, it's a three mark question. Describe how Lake Chad has changed. Use measurements in your answer. So because it said use measurements, you need to be using this scale. And if I was using the scale to help me measure it, I would probably go for something like measuring the length from kind of the northwest to southeast. So the length of the lake in 1972 was, however, the length now in 2007 is and then measure it again so you can show the difference in size you could also talk about how it's no longer even found in certain countries so three simple points to describe how the lake has changed okay so now we're going to do a little bit of maths to actually look at how much the lake has reduced by now finally on one of my last ever youtube lessons i have learnt my lesson with the maths and i have learnt to do the maths first so i'm not pausing and not having a calculator and yeah so if we were to look at this data we have got the size of the lake in 1963 and the size of the lake in 2003 and what i want us to do is to work out the percentage decrease so how much has the lake decreased by so in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is to divide the 2003 number by the 1963 number. So we're dividing the, the now, so the change, by what it was originally. So we have got... So we will be dividing uh, 1,350 by 25,000. And my prior calculations tell me that this is 0.054. So then we have to times that by 100, which gives us 5.4. So this is um, the amount that is left remaining. So this is how much of the original lake is now left. There is 5.4% of the lake left. But this is asking us to work out the percentage decrease. So we have one last step that we need to do, and that is, if the full percentage is 100, we need to take 5.4 off that, which leaves us with 94.6%. So the lake has decreased by 94.6%. There is only 5.4% of the original Lake Chad is actually still there. So that is a huge amount of water that has been lost. So the last thing I want you to do is we're going to have a look at some data here, which shows us um, a lot about Lake Chad. So I know on that map we saw that Lake Chad, the actual lake, was only within four countries. But the rivers feeding into that lake span a huge drainage basin. So the water flowing into that lake actually covers seven different countries. So we've got Nigeria, Niger, Algeria, Sudan, Central African Republic, Chad and Cameroon. Okay, so what we have got on this table, this first column shows us the percentage of the drainage basin within a country. So if we were to look at the whole 100% drainage basin, how much of that drainage basin is within each country? So we can quite clearly see here that Chad has got the highest amount. 43.9% of Lake Chad is in Chad. Makes sense. But what we've also got here is the GDP per capita. So we can see the average income in each of these countries. So looking at this, we can start to pick out which of our countries are poorer than the others. Now, we can start to see a bit of a pattern here. So firstly, I would like you to have a go at these two questions here. So which countries are the poorest within the basin and which countries have the highest percentage of the basin within their boundaries? So I would probably go with three of each. So three of the, the three poorest countries are and the three countries with the highest amount of the drainage basin within them. Then I want you to have a go at answering this question. So based on 
the amount of the drainage basin within their country and their GDP. Which countries do you think have got the most right to be taking water and exploiting Lake Chad? So I want you to answer these three questions in full sentences and then we are pretty much done for the day. Okay, well done year 10. So again, a slightly shorter lesson today. Our next lesson, we're going to be having a look at the effects. So we've done the kind of the why. We've done the why Lake Chad. Um, no, sorry, we haven't done the why, we've done the what. We've done the what's been happening at Lake Chad, what's happened to the change. And then next lesson, we're going to have a look at the why and the impact. So why that's happening and what impact is it having on people. So in your books today, you should have the over-obstruction key term, the Hicks versus Lick snowball on over-obstruction, the description of Lake Chad's change and answers on access to the drainage basin. So who has the rights over the drainage basin? Okay. Um, well done, Year 10. I will see you all very, very soon.